Hi there, and welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 3. In this lesson, we'll be looking at how you differentiate sine x, cos x, and simple functions of sine and cos. We won't be proving the results, we will just be stating them. First of all, looking at sine x. If y is sine x, then dy by dx is equal to cos x. If we multiply sine x by a constant, like 2 sine x or 3 sine x, then when you differentiate k sine x in general, you'll get dy by dx is equal to k cos x. That's using the rule for multiplying functions when you differentiate. You'd write down the k, differentiate the sine, and that gives you cos x. Slightly more tricky, and you need to take a bit more care with these, is if you had k times by the sine of another constant a times by x. In this instance, what you're using is the chain rule. First of all, you're differentiating the sine. When you differentiate the sine, that gives you k times by the cosine of ax. And then you're differentiating the ax. When you differentiate ax, you get times by a. And that gives you ak cosine ax. Something very similar happens with cosine, except you get a minus. So the differential of cos x is minus sine x. If you have k times by cos x, then the differential is minus k times by sine x. And as with sine, if you've got the cosine of ax, when you differentiate it, first of all, you differentiate the cos to get minus sine, and then you'll have to multiply by the a when you differentiate ax. And that gives you minus ak sine ax. Okay, that's the summary of the four key results and six examples for you to have a go at. So have a go, pause the video, and then come back to me when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look at these. So first of all, y equals five sine x. Um, you write down to five, you differentiate the sine x, and that gives you five cos x. Secondly, if you had the sine of five x, you differentiate sine, and that gives you the cosine of five x. And then when you differentiate 5x, you get 5. So you get 5 times by the cosine of 5x. Question 3, if you have 5 times by the sine of 5x, differentiating 5 sine 5x will give you 5 cos 5x. Differentiating the 5x gives you times by 5. 5 times 5 gives you 25 times by the cosine of 5x. Question 4. If you had y equals 3 times by the cosine of 4x, differentiating cos gives you minus sine, so you get minus 3 times by the sine of 4x, and then times that by 4 when you differentiate the 4x, and that gives you minus 12 times by the sine of 4x. Question 5 is joining two together, but you just do them independently in exactly the same way as before. So when you differentiate sine 3x, you'll get cos 3x, times by the 3, which will give you 21. Differentiating cos 2x will give you minus sine 2x, times it by the 2 will give you 12. And the final answer is 21 cos 3x minus 12 sine 2x. Question 6 is the same idea. You've got fractions, so it's a little bit more awkward, but you do it in the same way. Differentiating sine 8x gives you cos 8x, and then you'll have to times this fraction by 8. Differentiating minus cos 2x gives you plus sine 2x, and then you'll have to multiply this fraction by 2. That gives you 24 over 4 times by the cosine of 8x, plus 4 fifths times by the sine of 2x. And 24 over 4 you can simplify, so the final answer would be dy by dx equals 6 cos 8x plus 4 fifths times by the sine of 2x. Okay, slightly trickier. Example two, a curve has got equation y equals a half x minus the cosine of 2x. Find the stationary points on the curve in the interval where x is between 0 and pi. Now, stationary points, that's where the gradient equals 0, or dy by dx equals 0. I'll let you have a go at this yourself first. So pause the video, have a go, and then come back when you're ready. Okay, well, let's have a look. We said we're going to have to differentiate this. So dy by dx, when we differentiate a half x, we'll get a half. 
differentiating minus cos gives us plus sine. And then differentiating the 2x means we're going to have to times by 2. So that gives us a half plus 2 times by the sine of 2x. And as we were saying, dy by dx, the gradient has to equal 0 at the stationary points, which means this has to equal 0. So a half plus 2 sine 2x must equal 0 at the stationary points. Uh, moving to half over gives us 2 sine 2x is minus a half. Dividing by 2 gives us sine 2x equals minus a quarter. Now, at this point, you reach for your calculator, and your calculator will give you the first solution to this equation. So doing inverse sine of both sides will give us 2x is equal to minus 0 0.2527 radians. Do make sure that you've got your calculator set to radians. Now I would draw a quick sketch of sine x, just to see what we've got there. And what we've got is this solution here. This is the one that your calculator has given you at minus 0 0.2527 radians. Now there's an infinite number of solutions, all at this height of minus a quarter. So the next one along would be at this point here. To find out that point, you have to use the symmetry of the curve. So your calculator gives you the first solution. Symmetry will give you the second solution. That distance there to the y-axis is 0 0.2527, and the distance here from pi will be the same as that. So the easiest way to find this solution is just to do pi plus 0 0.2527. And that gives you the second solution, which will be 3.3943 radians. Now, once you've found the first two, every other solution is just a multiple of 360 degrees or 2 pi radians further away. So, for instance, to get from here to the solution here, you'd add on 2 pi. To get from here to here, you'd add on 2 pi. So those are all the other solutions on the part of the graph that I've shown. And multiples of 2 pi will get you to all the other solutions. So these are these four moving up from here. And 6.0305, 9.6775 are these two. Okay, so that's what we've done so far. We've said 2x could equal any of these solutions. Now, there are other possibilities as well. The reason why I haven't carried on any further in the positive direction or the negative direction is because I know I won't need to. We've only got to find values where x is between 0 and pi. So it doesn't need to be negative. So this solution, for instance, won't count. Um, 2x is that. When I find x, I'll halve this, but that'll still be a negative value. This value, when I halve it, that'll be between 0 and pi. This value, when I halve it, that'll be between 0 and pi. Now, this value, when I halve it, it's going to be about 4.8, 4.9, and that's quite a lot bigger than pi. So actually, the, only these two middle values will be needed. And halving those gives me x equals 1.70 and x equals 3.02 to two decimal places. So there are two stationary points between x equals 0 and x equals pi. One of them is at 1.70 radians, and the second one is at x equals 3.02 radians. Now, we've got to find the stationary points. That means we've got to find the x and y values. So we found the x values so far, but we do still need to find the y values just using the equation for y, the original equation. So first of all, substituting x equals 1.7 into this equation would give us that. This is just calculator work now. And using a calculator to three significant figures, that'll give us y equals 1.82. Same thing for the second solution. So at x equals 3.02, we substitute that into the original equation, which will give us this. Again, this is just calculator work now, and that gives you y equals 0 0.539 to three significant figures. So there are two stationary points, and we can now write down their full coordinates. The first one is at 1.70, 1.82, and the second one is at x equals 3.02 and y equals 0 0.539. Okay, that gets us to the end of this lesson. 
If you've got the textbook, then turn to page 125 and have a go at exercise 6A. Thank you very much for listening and cheerio.